Hey guys, it's Charmise Idris here and today I'm going to show you how to make an all natural cold process soap. Uh, this was a requested video so here it is. Um, but first we're going to talk safety. As you can see I have my safety glasses on and I also wear a mask when I'm mixing the lye into the water just because of the fumes you don't want them in your body. And I also open a window and just be in a well ventilated area or you can do it outside as well. Um, I also wear my gloves and long sleeves just because uh, the lye can burn so if you're mixing it into the oils it'll, it can splash up and burn your skin so yeah just be safe <laughs> and I also have my hair out the way just because I don't want it all crazy so let's just get into it oh also the recipe will be in the description below So first we're going to make our lye water solution. You're going to mix the lye into the water, distilled water, but you're never going to mix the water into the lye, okay? And now I'm just going to add two teaspoons of sodium lactate because sodium lactate will actually help the soap come out of the mold just a little bit easier. It is not necessary, but I do it for every one of my soaps. So you can go ahead and stir all of that together. Uh, you will hear some fizzing a little bit and then there will be a very strong smell, which is why I say have an open window or be outside. And it is really hot as you can see. All right, we're gonna let this cool down to about 120 to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. While we're waiting on the lye to cool down, we're gonna warm up our oils. And here I have the coconut, castor, and olive oil, and I'm gonna put it in the microwave for 30 second bursts until it gets to 120 to 130. And this is at 126, so it's perfect. And my lye is now at 126 as well. So I'm just gonna slowly pour the lye water solution into my oil. And I'm doing it like this because I don't want air bubbles. Now I'm going to take my stick blender and just emulsify my mix and that just means that I'm going to mix up the oil and the lye solution until they cannot be separated. And that only took a few seconds. Now that the mixture is emulsified, I'm going to add the fragrance. I was originally going to do a lavender fragrance, but I ended up spilling it so I ended up doing a lavender vanilla fragrance which ended up turning my soap brown because if you don't know, vanilla does cause discoloration in cold processed soap. You can get a vanilla stabilizer, but I don't have that and I didn't really mind that it turned out brown, but I do have a picture of what it would have looked like if I did not put vanilla in it as well. You can see that at the end of the video. First, I'm gonna blend it by hand with my spatula because I don't wanna speed up trace. And then I will follow with my stick blender. You'll be able to tell that you hit trace when you can wave your stick blender over your batter with it dripping. And you'll see a little trail of your mixture sitting on top of everything else. So you can have thin trace, medium trace, and thick trace. And I like to have mine uh, medium to thick whenever I'm doing just one color or like no designs. For this mixture, it took me about 55 seconds to a minute to get to my desired trace. Um, I was at trace oh, probably about 40 seconds in, but I went a little further just so that I can have that thicker trace. And it probably took so long because it's a little bit colder in my house and I also usually stick blend on like the lowest level. So I'm not sure if you can tell, but there's just a little trail of the little drips that are coming from the stick blender. They're sitting right on top of that mixture. So I know I'm at trace. So now your mixture is ready to be poured into the mold. And there are plenty of molds out there. I got this one from Brambleberry. It's the tall soap mold. And they also have the same exact soap molds on Amazon. And I can link both of those below. And before the soap gets poured into the mold, I do spray it with 99% isopropyl alcohol. 
Also keep in mind that the fragrance oils that you choose or you know your essential oils they can accelerate trace or they can slow down trace or like in my case they can also discolor your soap. Some places that you buy your fragrance oil from will actually give a description on how that fragrance oil will affect co-processed soap. Now I'm just going to slam it on the table a little bit just so that it can be evenly spread out throughout the mold. To decorate the top, I'm just going to use some rose petals, lavender, and calendula. And the reason I like to get to medium to thick trace is because I don't like to wait too long until I can decorate the top. Because with a thin trace, you'll have to wait just a little bit longer until your decoration will actually stay at the top. And my soap isn't quite set up yet to be able to use the fork in there. And one issue I have with this salt mold is that it tends to bend in the middle. So I do have this old mold that I used to use and it fits perfectly inside of there, but you can also use twine to tie around like so. My design that I'm gonna to use today, I'm just gonna scrape the fork across the top to make little lines. And keep in mind, this is not a fork that I use for eating. This is a fork that is specifically for soap making. When I'm all done decorating the top, I just set it over somewhere where it won't be disturbed and I put a piece of cardboard over the top and then over that I put a towel, like a big dry towel over that. And I let it sit for about 24 hours to 48 hours and then I take it out of the mold. So I ended up letting it sit for about two days and this is what it looked like. So as you can see, it is brown. This is a picture of what it would look like if there was no vanilla added. So it is quite a bit lighter. So you actually don't need a soap cutter. You can use a knife or you can even use a cheese cutter. Honestly, that's what I use for the longest. So my soap is still a little discolored in the middle, which is perfectly fine. Uh, once it sits, it'll probably actually be fine in the next two days, it'll all be the same color. So now that they're all cut, I'm gonna let them cure for about four to six weeks in a cool, dry place. Um, all the excess water will evaporate and it'll make a much harder bar of soap, so it'll last much longer in the shower. So I sell it about the fifth week and then it gets to my customers about the six week. And that's it. So thanks for watching.